there. Thanks so much for stopping by. Tonight I'm going to be painting a sunflower pattern on a white wine glass. This glass is a Libby glass and it is a 20 ounce wine glass. This again is an easy, easy to paint design. I am just trying to focus on easy patterns that just about anybody uh, can do. Just give you a little look here of the actual glass that we're going to be painting. All right, I've already cleaned my glass, and as I mentioned, or try to mention often, it's very important that you clean your glass for before you paint on it. You can wash it, you know, with warm soapy water, dry it off, and then go over it with rubbing alcohol, or you know, just wash it with the soapy water and dry it. It's important to make sure it's dry though because a lot of times when I'm doing these videos I'm painting them and if I tip them over because I would have just washed them a lot of times I get water running out of them so it's very important to make sure that you do dry them. Tonight I'm going to be using forest moss and thicket green two of my favorite paints to use these are folk art enamels, which is what I normally, well, just always use. Then the yellow ochre, school bus yellow, sunflower, and coffee bean, which I want to try to get some burnt umber. They used to have some really neat varieties of brown paint. A lot of times they're hard to find in the store without actually ordering online. And then licorice black. Because I would typically use the darker brown and possibly the black or the two different browns for my center of my sunflower. Brushes I'm going to be using tonight. I actually got some new blush brushes. I'm very excited about that. I have a 10 inch uh, glass painting brush. It is a one stroke a flat brush. And number 10 and then I have my three-quarter scruffy brush which is also a one stroke glass brush I just I love the one stroke brushes I just really feel like you can't get a better quality brush for the price and I don't care what anybody says it's important to have a good brush when you're painting they last for a very long time double loading my brush with the coffee bean and the licorice brown, black, excuse me. Going to do similar to what I did on the last glass that I did. Just wanted to go ahead and do a demonstration of the sunflower, which I love sunflowers. And with this demo, again, it's just going to be very simple going around the glass, touching you know, with the scruffy brush. And then I just keep adding paint periodically. It's going to be a lot of black. Again, you can use whatever colors you wish for your center of your sunflower. A little heavy on the black on this one. But I'm just going to go ahead and tap around it. Come around the top of the stem. Try to have some brown as much as possible towards the top because that's where I will be putting the leaf or the petals, excuse me, of the flower. I guess so these are just fun, easy to paint patterns that I'm doing right now. Just to give you an idea of something that you can do very quickly and easily. And they're cost effective. I guess and then I don't I don't tape off, but if you want to make sure that you're coming up to where you want on your glassware that it matches or similar to the other one you painted because no two will be alike if you're freehand painting it's just not going to happen like they'll be similar but they aren't going to be identical and that's something if you're going to be selling them you need to make sure people know as well as color because colors can vary from one monitor to the next People don't keep that in mind when they're looking at stuff to buy online and 
looking at. That is something to consider when you're purchasing something because you're not actually seeing the product right there in front of you. All right, so I've gotten it. I just keep turning my glass to kind of dip around the, the top of the stem down here. With the black, it's kind of hard to see with my eyesight at least. I am going to go ahead and hit this with a, with a hair dryer just to get it just a little bit dry. Alright, so once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, number 10 flat brush and just load it randomly with the all the yellows. The, the um, Just kind of dabbling it into the paint so I have a little bit of each color on there. I do two rows of petals on the glass and I am going to go ahead and dip a little bit of it into the brown because I'll be honest with you it's not going to pull up since I did the hair dryer brown's not going to really come up from this base onto my brush and it's basically just a real easy you can do it like where it goes different directions. You're just pulling it. Like I said, you can vary the strokes if you want it to go like that direction. some go in that direction just so that they're not just completely straight up and you can actually you know, bend them around to where you know they're kind of whimsical for the purpose of this video though I'm just going to do straight straight painting pretty much and then you just keep turning the glass you can paint over it like this one's a little thin so I'm going to go ahead and paint over it here go back and add. I just keep adding after each one because I want the paint to be a little bit thicker. So I keep adding paint. If you do like a strict one stroke, you're going to want your brush to be three quarters of the brush full of paint. I'm not really doing this as a one stroke. It's just basically me touching the brush into the paint and not actually loading the brush like you would if you were doing a one stroke design. I said when you paint for a long period of time you're going to find your own your own style even if you start off using somebody else's style you're probably going to add your own variation which is perfectly fine with this type of painting I am just going to be using the same colors as I go around and add the second row but if you wanted to be creative you could do different colors so that they stand out more just for the purpose of this video though, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep using the four colors and vary them, you know, as far as like the actual uh, leaf of the, of the flower, the petal of the flower. I don't know why. I just want to call it leaf. You can make them a little bit further apart. Um, on some of mine, I've actually done it to where I put dots in between them gives it you know a different kind of a look but I just don't like them to be just straight up but like I said you could actually do something where you pull them down they come over but my next step is going to be it actually to put the um, leaves in so I'm going to shy away from doing that because how I'm actually doing these will go out well um, that will interfere with the leaves and you won't actually see it. You won't actually see your work, so there's no point. Okay, so they used to have a color of paint that I loved. It was more like a rusty brown when I would paint these. Oh, it was just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Just like the perfect contrast. And I probably could mix it, mix my own color 
I just haven't had time to try to figure out what what variations of paint actually go into into that color. Now this right now I'm just going over and restripping the leaves. I'm not adding another row of leaves on. Just want to make them a little bit thicker. Get some more brown in them. It's very nice, very easy, just simple strokes. As you can see. And then the next part I will go ahead and add the second row. Now you could also make this row a little shorter and then when you add in the second row make it a little longer you know so that it, that's pretty much how or you could just even do one row. You don't have to put an, another row into it. But I want to. I just want to go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to try to put them in between, if at all possible. But this is where you can see if you used a different color or maybe made a part of it a little darker, varied the colors. Because you could actually vary the colors from, you know, one one of these petals to another. Yeah, there's a lot of fun things, and they don't necessarily have to be yellow either. Just keep that in mind. It's a fun party glass, or just to sit in the evening and drink your favorite wine. Nice contrasting color would be adding some orange into this mix. I could see that. Now, with this, with this particular style of painting, you may find, and I found this on the other one. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, let's see how I can show it to you. In there, it does disturb the brown a little bit. But that's okay. You know, you're mainly looking for it to have some interest on the outside. At least that's what I'm going for here. If I were going to do the reverse painting and want to be more detailed where it's fun looking at it from the inside, then I would actually take more time in between the steps, making sure it dried, you know, dried fully, not just with a blow dryer, and then, then continue painting. So just keep that in mind. The purpose of this is just to have it look fun, more or less from the outside of the glass. Okay, so there we have it. I'm just going to turn it here so you can see it. Not perfect, but it's, it's exactly the way I wanted it. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is go back over the center part. And you can, you know, again, do some blow drying in between this. I'm not going to just for, again, for the purpose of this video. I'm going to just keep going on here with it and do it while it's wet, which is fine. And if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. I'd love to be able to get my work out to you. If you know anybody else that might like my work, please share my videos. Like and subscribe. I would definitely appreciate that. Like I said, in this, you're not going to see this a whole lot as you noticed on my sample one because I do put the leaves here. But it goes, you know, it just kind of finishes this up a little bit. Just tap them back over it which I typically would do and if I was painting it as an open one on the glass I would go back and tape over the center, or not tape, but tap over the center of the flower. I 
Okay, I just hit the glass with uh, the hair dryer to dry it a little bit before I go in and put in the, the leaves. And if you remember on my sample glass, I just have three big, bigger leaves that go around it, just randomly painted, and then I just put in three uh, smaller, you know, like little one-stroke leaves to kind of fill in the space. I also did around the base of the ball of the glass and the top of the stem, like I did the other one on my, my previous video, just to kind of finish that off. Now I'm going to go ahead and load my brush with the Thicket Green and the Forest Moss. On this I'm going to just pretty much kind of hand draw in my leaf because I want them to be, you know, bigger leaves that kind of come in like that. Hopefully you can see this. These dark colors are kind of hard. And it's kind of almost kind of like a heart now that I'm looking at it. Now I'm just going to go back over with the paint, try to fill it in. You know, with the combination of the two colors. It's not a very detailed leaf, not meant to be. Like I said, you know, keep in mind this is for somebody to be able to do that doesn't have a lot of stroke work knowledge. I mean, if you wanted just to color it in one color and then layer it, you know, do the layering effect with the paint, you, know, you could do that too. Um, keep in mind your, your brown, if you're not allowing drying time in between, could be a little wet still. So it might mix in with your green paint, which is fine. I mean, it's okay to have more than two colors, you know, in a in a part of your your work. Just a very simple, simple, simple leaf. You know, if you want to do it like it's shaded, you know, with the, the sun is, or light is coming in one direction, you can do that. I'm not going to mess with that too much right now. I'm just trying to get the basics painted here. So you can, whoops, I'm sorry, off the camera. I'd love to hear what you think about my new camera. If you're familiar with any of my other videos, if you're liking it, I just have to remember to keep looking at it now to make sure I'm still on screen. But I think so far I like it. Alright. And like I said, you know, you could do it where you're going to do darker green around the edges, whatnot. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to keep moving here. And I just run a just a little stem through there. Turn my glass a little bit and I'm going to continue on. Basically go ahead and do the same thing just to have a big leaf. I'm go back into coloring it in. Let's use these two different colors. Like I said, you know, if you're doing this on your own and not, you know, not the purpose of doing a video, but you're just at home doing this on your own, you know, you can take more time with this. I just, you know, as I've mentioned several times, I'm not a big fan of really long videos, so I try to keep mine fairly short because I get really like, come on, get to the point, get to the point. I'm sorry, still trying to stay on camera here. I also don't want to feel like I'm rushing either, so I don't want to rush you with this. Because then I don't like videos either where they, they're doing it so quickly. It's like, okay, what did you just do now? Wait a minute, slow down, back up. What did you just say? <laughs> Sorry, I should keep it down. I'm not doing it so close. 
like I said, if you wanted to go back through and do it like this, just kind of blending it in more, maybe have the darker green more towards the edge. If you wanted to do it to where it's just a mixture of color, which is kind of what I'm doing, you know, just blend the colors. You know, that's fine. And I am going to put a little bit more darker green in here. And then maybe put a little bit more of that forest moss in here. Alright, and then we have to talk about bake time. I like to try to mention on my videos. Just remember, place your glass in a cold oven. Add preheat time to your bake time. Remove the glass after it has cooled completely. Follow your manufacturer's instructions. Um, they are the ones who created the paint. They have the the knowledge of what needs to be done for your for your paint to work and perform properly. And paint can be really, really um, touchy when it comes to you know like the temperature, when it comes to humidity even. You know, because we do a lot of work outside in our garage. And I know sometimes the paint, even the varnish, at one point this summer was behaving funny. Because we were spraying that outside, and it was really strange. So, you know, keep in mind, keep all that in mind, you know, where you're going to be doing the painting. Um, what type of paint you're using, because it all behaves differently. Um, you know, you have your... Pebo paints or PBO, however you say it, those are more of the, at least my experience has been, more of the glass staining kind of look. Although I have seen people use them and get an opaque look with them, and I'm not really quite sure how they've achieved that. But those paints, if I remember correctly, make you air dry them for 24 hours after you've painted them and which is a lot a lot of time for me especially uh, when I was doing a lot of painting and selling the glasses it was you know that just wouldn't have worked for me I needed something that I could paint and basically be done with in an evening or time setting you know each day that they would be ready to go so but anyways with that paint I found that there are a lot of bubbles in the paint so I'm not sure if that was just me or if that's just the way the paint behaved but that's what my experience was and I really with the folk art enamels I, mean, I just have I just have always loved them and like I've mentioned in some of my other videos, I paint everything with this paint. I've painted walls, you know, um, you know, murals on walls with it. I mean, seriously. And they've come out beautifully. Painted a lot of stuff in my own home. Painted for other people. When you're, let's say, when you're ready to move on to something else, it's very easy to cover up and continue on. Not, not a problem. So these are the little filler leaves that I'm putting in right now. And I'm basically just doing them all pretty much the same or similar um, as I did yeah, on the other glass. And I'm sorry, hearing my dogs are Getting at it again. It's that time of night, and for some reason, the puppy is actually not really looking like much of a puppy anymore. She's getting pretty big. She just drives the old dog crazy, and then she drives us crazy when we're trying to sit down in the evening and watch TV and 
you know, I work on my computer a lot in the evening, and next thing you know, here she comes. She's ready to, you know, ready to start trouble, as we call it. So I can hear her up there. All right. So the last thing that I'm going to do on this is do what I did around the base of the last one I did, just to kind of clean it up, tie it all together. So, so I've done the done the leaves over it. And the next the next class, I promise I will do a different style of design. But I was just kind of itching to do another sunflower. All right, so again, if you like my glass painting videos, please make sure you're subscribing. Make sure that you also hit the bell so that when I do introduce a new video, you get a notification knowing that I have posted a new video. Please, 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 please give me a big thumbs up, share, and I hope to see you the next time. I do appreciate you taking the time to view, and have a good evening. Until the next time, see you then. <coughs>